Welcome to Columbia County, Washington. It's got a population of about 4,000 people, but this tiny pocket of the Pacific Northwest is getting national attention right now because it could be the very first county in the United States to close a library over controversial book titles. As an outsider driving through its golden hills of wheat, it's easy to understand why the people of Columbia County, Washington, want to protect it. There's always somebody that will reach out and, and help you in this community if you ask, or sometimes even if you don't ask. Deb Fortner is a wheat farmer and has lived here her whole life. She says she's one of the many people <laughs> hoping to protect Columbia County, but she represents one of two fiercely opposed groups going about doing it. Wasn't surprised and knew it was time to hunker down with the community and fight for our library. At the center of the debate is the Dayton Memorial Library, the only one in the county. It's a place where, in an area with spotty service and long drives, with access to the internet and other information materials, it's also the only free gathering space in the region. One side, Deb's side, wants to save the library. The other side wants the library to be dissolved. Both sides believe their will is for the good of the county. The divide is over controversial book titles, mainly LGBTQ plus themes with what some consider to be sexually explicit descriptions. The Dissolve the Library side claims all they want is for the books to be moved out of the downstairs children and young adult areas, books they refer to as, quote, pornography. If it's gonna go to that point where they are demanding that one side only be represented, then I'm gonna say, well, we do have to, we have an issue there. Lorna Barth is the president of the Friends of Dayton Library, an organization that was created to help the library fundraise, and now it's the group that's fighting to save it. Our whole existence has been, you know, making fun things and supplement things, not the heavy duty of the possibility of what are you, what are you gonna to do to help save the library? We don't know. So upstairs is where we moved all of the young adult nonfiction. The library said it did move some books upstairs, but not all, and it hasn't removed any book outright from its collection. The Dissolve side said those moves are not enough. Several back and forths in public meetings and a growing list of titles later, a petition to dissolve the library was passed with 163 signatures. In November, it will come down to a county ballot measure when 1,007 people will be eligible to vote to save or dissolve the library. If they don't want to read it or they don't want their children to read it, that is their that is their choice and I'm all for that. Do as you please, but if we remove them, we'd be preventing anybody from reading it and I don't think that's our place at all. According to the American Library Association, or ALA, requests to censor library books hit a 21-year high last year at 1,050, a 70% increase from 2021. No one from the Dissolve the Library side wanted to sit down with me in person, saying that other journalists did not represent their side fairly. One man, however, Seth Murdoch, agreed to answer questions over email. He told me, the biggest concern with this library is the procurement and display of sexually explicit books written for children and youth. This story reflects conversations happening in communities across the country. The debate not only about certain books, but the role of public and school libraries and who should control what books they have on their shelves. As Columbia County's library garners national attention as the first in the country to be potentially closed over this issue, I asked local residents what they want Americans to take away from their story. Contact your own libraries. See if, you, if they're hearing anything. Be aware of what's happening. I guess that's my warning. This is real. It's, they could take it away. Murdoch also answered the same question, writing, I would simply suggest that people look into the institutions that they directly fund, to take responsibility of curating what is essentially theirs, to not be ashamed of the values and beliefs that they hold, and to stand behind them. For Deb Fortner, as she watches this play out in her beloved community, she hopes that people across the country stay active and get informed. It doesn't matter how you vote. Just vote educated. Don't vote based on these emotions that you hear spinning around. Go do the research, take the time. It's messy, it's painful. Educate yourself. Vanessa Bishanya, Scripps News, Columbia County, Washington.